P.S. Caps, Caps, Caps. Yes, sir. Greetings and salutations. This is Ref the District. I am your boy, Stoner. And this is Stoner's Recaps. See what I did there? Where I recap each of these playoff games. An awesome game today. The Capitals win 6-1. to one. I couldn't even keep up with all the goals. That's why I couldn't remember the exact score. It was 6-1 to one at the end of the day at Cap 1. It was awesome. We're going to recap the whole thing. I've got an awesome guest for you who's going to help me break this all down. Let's get some of the housekeeping out of the way. Do us all a favor. We'd appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button, if you'd hit that notification button so that you know when we're putting out new content because we do it all the time, and especially when we go live. When Nathan, myself, and Trevor, we go live every Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. You can catch us there. We are DC's top-rated sportscast. I totally made that up, but that's okay because I'm on a high right now. But uh, we talk about the Commanders, we talk about the Nationals, we talk about the Wizards, and of course, we talk about the Caps. So without further ado, we're going to break down this game with a very, very special guest. You all know him. He really doesn't need an introduction. His name is John Allville, better known as Cakes from 106.7 The Fan, Sports Junkies, every weekday morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's where you'll find them on 106.7 The Fan. You'll also find them on NBC Sports Washington. And if you can't catch them live, catch their podcast. I've been listening to their podcast since 2007. So they were one of the first people in the podcast game. So catch them there or on Odyssey or anywhere you get your podcast. Again, without further ado, Johnny Cakes Allville. There he is. It's Cakes. Thanks, Cakes. I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, talking to me, at least for the time being. And let's talk a little bit about the, the game. You were at the game. Yes, and... first of all, I need to thank Jim Van Stone from Monumental oh, yeah. Sports. He uh, <laughs> took care of my request. And I, I've had amazing seats, Section 120, Row P. Um, I, was, I was sitting pretty close to the, my vantage point when the first goal was scored against Ilya. I mean, we were right up the row from it. And oh, no, yeah. You could just feel like the, you could feel like the, the tension in the crowd because – I mean, look, we we all know that goaltending and the the back and forth of it all with both VTech and now Ilya getting starts in the series, you could tell Caps fans were like, "Uh oh, this is not a good start." But, <laughs> yeah, but he really settled in after that. And uh, my wife was telling me she was you know, reading me some tweets on the, in the car on the way home that uh, I guess he was really moved and touched by the fact that people were chanting his name in the arena. He said he almost felt like crying. He said it was yeah. an amazing moment and. It was great, man. That atmosphere at Capital One was absurd. I mean, Caps fans really brought it today. It was wild. It was fun to be a part of. When's the last time you went to a playoff game? Not a regular season, but a playoff. I think I might have I might have gone to one of the Canes games a couple of years ago. Mm. Um, I can't quite put my finger on it. but Yeah, it's been a um, while, though, right? It has been a while. And yeah. like the atmosphere today was – I think it was pretty close to – the Stanley cup final atmosphere. Um, wow. I went to one of the games. I think it was game four where, where the caps just punished the golden Knights, whatever yeah. game that was, where it was a blowout. And it was just like goal after goal, complete domination. Yeah. And that's kind of like what this game was after Sammy gave up that early goal. Like the, the caps were the better team throughout. Um, they were, they were clearly in the Panthers heads. You, you saw how chippy was getting. I mean, it was like every, gathering around the goal mouth mm -hmm. was like you know, sticks are in the air punches are being thrown guys are collaring guys and it yeah. i think the next game is going to be even even more like higher up on the the chippiness scale i i think the 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 fighting is going to get ramped up i think you're going to see tensions in an all-time high but you have to love what the caps have done in this series with you know, being the eight seed with Tom yep. Wilson having played 91 seconds in the series and they have yep. a two one lead over the one seed. I mean, if you're a Caps fan, you have to be thrilled with what they've done so far. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what was impressive and you kind of already mentioned it, that first goal had to kind of let a little air out of the building. It was so early and it was a little bit yeah. soft. Yeah. But you have to be impressed with nothing else, nothing else the rest of the game with Samsonov was he was making some great saves, but 
but I thought the defense in general in front of him was very good. Yeah, they were they were not allowing uh, Florida have to have a lot of like odd man rushes. There were a few, but uh, the Caps mm-hmm. for the most part snuffed them out. Uh, some thunderous hitting in the game, especially by yeah. Ovi. Uh, I know he's not a defenseman, obviously, but like people that only me. think he's a goal scorer, yeah. like they're completely missing the physical aspect of his game. And so he was hitting along with the defenseman and uh, it was great to see TVR get a goal. Like that's, you know, that's a guy you don't expect to yep. be on uh, with, with a goal on the box score, but he got one. It was nice to see Mojo, you know, chip in and get one. Mojo had, I think he had a goal and an assist. He did. Yeah. win. So, you know, that's chalked that up for another nice Brian McClellan, you know, like trade deadline yeah. piece that, that helps out when they need it in the playoffs. When a guy like Wilson sidelined, I'm going to throw a couple of stats out at you. Okay. That you may not have seen because you were there. You don't get kind of the yeah stuff that they throw out there during the game on, on television. Uh, so Florida had been held to one goal or less this season, three times, right? Three times all year. And then they did it here in this game. So yeah. they're obviously defensively just cracking down on them defensively and with, with questionable goaltending as you know, like heading into the series, that was the, mm. the major emphasis for caps fans. And you know, the, mm. the, the worries they had were, you know, was it going to be VTech? Was it going to be Sammy? And now it's gotta be Sammy going forward after the performance he put forward today. Like, you it's know, got- yeah. Laviolette kept saying, like, I'm waiting for one of these guys to seize the, the moment and really grab a hold of the job. And may, maybe Sammy did it with, with that performance today. Maybe that gives him a ton of confidence heading forward. Were you a Sammy guy before this game? Were you in favor of of turn it, turning it over to Sammy instead of Vivi? I said on the junks about a month ago, I or, or maybe two or three weeks ago, I think I, I thought it was it was going to be VTech was going to get the, at least the game one nod, and he did. Uh, just because I think he's he's just a little steadier than than Sammy. Sammy may mm-hmm. have more talent, may have more pedigree, obviously drafted higher. Uh, but I just thought, especially with some of the, the the games in the regular season heading down the stretch, like some of his roller coaster performances there, I thought it was going to be, be VTech. But it, again, it was probably like sixty VTech, forty Sammy. You know, like yeah. I. I expected fully to see both of the goalies in the series and, you know, through, through this many games we have. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, before we let you go, I know you got to run. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to give me your three stars of the game. I have my three stars, but I'm going to see what your three stars were. Uh, You want three to one or. uh, Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. You always go three to one. You're the one that always. I'll, I'll, um, because I haven't looked at the stat sheet. Um, this is great. I'll give, I'll give the, the number three star to, to Mojo, who I mentioned. I think he mm-hmm. had one goal and one assist. You yep. got to love points from, you know, ancillary guys like him. Second star I will give to Ovi because he got on the board finally, which the Caps obviously need. Like, they're not going to go very far unless Ovi helps carry them. And I think the unquestioned number one star is Sammy. It's got to yeah. be Sammy for that. That When you have questionable goaltending and you're you're relying on a young guy like that, to, to kind of save you at home and, and be reliable. He showed that he has the capability to do it. Now it could, is he going to come out and do it in back-to-back mm-hmm. games? Hopefully he That's can. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but if he can't, then, you know, we might see VTech again, but the number one star definitely has to go to, to Sammy today. For sure. The only difference I had, I had Mantha as a third star and Mojo as a yeah. second. Mantha is playing out of his mind right now. Yeah, man. He needs to with Wilson going down. He's he went kind of into the corner. I can't remember what goal it was. It might have been the TBR goal where he went and dug out a puck mm-hmm. and kept yep. it alive in the offensive zone. And then I think it got to, to Trevor for the goal. I'm pretty sure that was right. Yeah, he he was he was a monster. He was pit, hitting people all over the ice using that big physical frame. Uh, and it definitely helped the Caps today. Yeah, he had that one that, and he then threw it to Mojo, I believe, and and then Mojo to TBR, and then he right. also had one where he got it directly to Mojo, and that's when Mojo scored. So he, yeah. he's been huge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Monday, what do you expect? Real quick, you just give me a, a fifteen second what you expect for Monday's game, game four. I expect a, a crazy hyped Capital mm-hmm. One after that win. I mean, that's that's yeah. a great way to come home after getting the split in Florida. And I look, I. 
I, I'm, this is not me being a homer. Through three games, the Caps have been the better team, despite some so. big personnel losses. I like the Caps to go up 3-1. I, I think it'll be closer than today's affair. I'm going to say, if you want to score, I'm going to say 4-2 Caps. Yeah. Caps take a commanding lead in the series. Do you remember saying that before game one? You just kind of threw it out there real quick on the show. You okay. said 4-2 Caps, and that's I what it ended up. I, I don't remember that, but yeah. I, I hope that's the case. I hope that's the way it plays out. I hope I'm well, a skier. Yeah, that's right. Well, Cakes, we appreciate your time uh, to course. come on to the show today. Uh, again, that's Johnny Cakes Allville. You can catch him every day, every weekday, 6 to 10 a.m. on 106.7 The Fan, NBC Sports Washington, and you catch him on the Odyssey app Yep. Uh, and podcasts if you don't catch it live. Everywhere you get podcasts. Cakes, much appreciated. Thanks for coming on. Corner, thanks. Let's go Caps. Let's go Caps. Talk to you soon. So that was Cakes. Really appreciate him taking the time to come and talk to us here on Ref the District on Stoner's Recaps. Uh, a little behind the scenes. He was Obviously, he was at the game. And he said, I've got dinner, 6.30. Speaking of dinner, time for my dog's dinner, 6 o'clock. He's got dinner, 6.30. So he only had a few minutes, but uh, he had uh, traffic to deal with. He said traffic was terrible. So... It's awesome that those guys take time uh, from their schedule, from their, it's Saturday, their home life, what they're doing, and, and come and talk to us here on Ref the District. Uh, really appreciate it, Cakes. All right, so let's get to a little bit of more uh, breakdown of each period. Let's talk about the first period. All right, as you heard with Cakes in that first period, um, it was a little dicey early and Sammy gave up the first goal of the game, just a couple minutes into the game. I don't know. It was three minutes in the game, two and a half minutes into the game. And you're thinking already, you're thinking, Oh my God, here we go. The goalie is just not up to, it. we just don't have a goalie, but defensively they, they, what's the right term. They clamped down for the rest of the period and didn't allow any more goals. So, uh, Backy had a couple of opportunities in the first, but Bob was on top of his game at that time. Um, and Weger did his little deal where he uh, he loves to turn the puck over and then either cause a penalty or allow a goal, which uh, he caused the penalty on this one. So there was a four-on-four four for just a couple of seconds, and then as soon as they come out of that four-on-four, four, and it's now a power play for the Caps, literally, I don't know, 10 seconds later? The Caps scored to tie the game, and it was a OV pass. He doesn't even get credit for a shot on that, I, as I understand it. It was a pass, and o, Oshie tipped it and tied the game. Oshie didn't even know that he tipped it. He didn't even know it went in the net. It was awesome, and that was just a couple of minutes left in the period. And this was exactly the opposite from game two when the Caps clearly outplayed Florida in the first period. But Florida scored late in the period to give them that 2-0 lead. Here, the Caps were pretty much outplayed in the first period by Florida, but they scored late. And you take that momentum into the locker room. I think that's a big thing. If it's 2 nothing and they score somewhere in the middle or whatever, it's not as big. But just before the end of the period, and if you're if you're thinking if you're Florida – We've played so well, we're up one nothing, and then all of a sudden you give up this late goal, and now it's tied, and you're thinking, man, we played well that period, and it's only tied. We should be up more. I think that's a huge psychological advantage. So at the end of one, it was one-to-one. Let's go to the second period. So start of the second period, very early on, the Panthers had almost back-to-back power plays. And you had to start to worry that, oh, no, they've got the jump here in the second period. But the Caps killed it off. And what always seems to happen, this happens in almost every game, every NHL game, not just the Caps. But if you have a four-minute power play and you don't score, in Florida's case, then what seems to happen is the Caps get a little momentum off of that again. And so they they shut it down, and about halfway through the period – Sammy makes a bunch of great saves, maybe two or three in succession there. And then uh, then they come down, and the Caps end up scoring on uh, Mojo, 
uh, Marcus Johansson, who was not around for the 2018 run. He was uh, traded in 2017. So he scores his first Caps playoff goal since 2017. So that was awesome, but that was due to Manta going right at the net and causing a lot of havoc, getting uh, Bob out of his, out of position and allowed Mojo to roof it with his backhand and put the Caps up 2-1. to one. So what happens immediately after that, the Panthers make a big push. And as they're making the big push, they get a little bit out of position. Caps come right back down. Who is it again? Mantha, Mojo, and then a great pass from Mojo to TVR. Again, Trevor Ram Van Riemsdyk, for those who don't know TVR. And, and again, it was Mantha making this play and causing a lot of havoc, getting guys out of position. Next thing you know, TVR is wide open. Pox it to make it 3-1 Caps. And again, Florida outshot the Caps 13-7 to in that period. But Sammy came up huge, huge in that period. And the Caps go in with a 3-1 to one lead. Let's go to the third period. So now you're in the third period. Florida is known for coming back in games. If you remember the last, I don't know if it was the last time they, I think it's the last time they played Florida was in November, late November. Caps had 4-1 lead going into the third period. They lost 5-4. I believe Florida had 27 shots in that period. It was like 27 to two, something like that. Florida scored with 14 seconds left and won that game five to four. This is what Florida does. I saw a stat where, uh, I don't remember the exact stat, but they are the number one team in the NHL for coming back. So you had to be aware of that. They had to be talking about it in the locker room before that third period, knowing they had to be tight uh, defensively. And they were, so that never materialized. And what happens is uh, Washington gets a power play. Somehow you leave the greatest goal scorer of all time all alone in his office. Guess what happens? Goal. So that makes it four to one. That pretty much uh, shuts everything down for Florida. They tried to pull their goalie um, with uh, 450 left. And what happens immediately, Carlson gets uh, an empty netter. And then, of course, Hathaway in the last minute of the game scores another to make the final 6-1, to one, an absolute whooping that Washington put on Florida in Game 3. A couple of stats we're going to go over. I talked with Cakes about some of these, but we're going to talk about them just a little bit. Florida had been, hold to, been held to one goal or less only three times all year. That's 82 regular season games plus the two uh, Caps games, playoff games, 84 times they played only three. Well, now 85 times they played and only four times that they've been held to one goal. That's awesome defense. That's coaching. That's experience. And that's what's given the Caps the lead. The last time they scored only one goal in a game was January 18th. they had gone 45 consecutive games with scoring at least two goals in a game. So amazing defense. I'm going to jone a little bit on a couple of things that I've joned on before. Well, first of all, the Panthers are 0 9 in the power play. They've got to get that fixed if they want to if they want to win. But let's reverse that or let's flip it and let's say the Caps are 9 for 9 on the penalty kill in this series. Let's go Caps. Uh at the end of game 2 when Florida won down in Sunrise, they won 5 to 1 if I remember correctly. That game is such a distant memory. I've forgotten it already. At the end of the game, that arena was half full, and I made mention of that. That would never happen at Cap 1, and it didn't happen in this game. This place was still rocking down to the final horn when the game was over. We don't play it like that. We don't play like that. Let's go. And uh, let's see. The last couple of things, the giveaways, Caps in Game 2 had 19 gives giveaways. They only had nine in this game. That was taking care of the puck. Those are huge. My three stars, as we talked about uh, with Caps. Mantha, I thought was great. He uh, he was grinding. He was hitting. He was making plays. He was Tom Wilson in this game, and he needed to be. We talked about that as soon as Wilson was declared out of game two, that the key to this team is Mantha making that step up, and he has. In this game, he was awesome. Mojo getting a goal and assist. Uh, 
Uh, Ovi also had a goal and assist, but I'm I'm picking Mojo because um, he's not expected to score a lot, and he did. He had a goal and an assist. Awesome. No doubt Samsonov is the star of the game, is the first star of the game. He was awesome. And make no mistake, I don't know if it's going to happen. Make no mistake, this team, if Samsonov plays like this, I'm just going to say, You don't want to play them. This has been the Stoners recaps here on Ref the District. Again, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification button. You can follow us on YouTube. Uh, We we go live every single Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of those things. For Nathan and Trev, love you fellas. We'll see you next time. And Until then, let's go Caps! Hey, it's your boy, The Stoner on Ref the District. If you get a chance, check out some of our other stuff here that you see there. And always, always hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are aware every time we go live, which is, of course, 7.30s Wednesdays. Check us out then and check us out anytime. Until next time, be a fan.